The place we're going to right now is the Shirokiya Japan Village Walk in the Ala Moana Shopping Center in Honolulu. Shirokiya traces its origins back as a retailer in Japan as far as back as the 1600s and became a department store in the early 1900s. And it recently shut down but has reopened as a food court just this past year. There are over 50 vendors, over 40,000 square feet of food. Street food, grilled things, fried things, things on sticks, okonomiyaki and takoyaki and different kinds of udon and soba and tempura and anything you could possibly want. So we're headed there right now. We're gonna see what this new space looks like and I can't wait to try the food. We're gonna get a super popular snack at this very cute looking place, Musubi Cafe Iyasume. And the musubi is a uh, little thing of rice with something on it, sometimes meat, sometimes egg, and then it's wrapped in a little strip of seaweed. This musubi is surfing. And they also have onigiri here, which are white rice, sort of shaped into triangle and wrapped with seaweed, and sometimes they're stuffed with different kinds of fish or vegetables, pickled vegetables, pickled fruits. Are you gonna mind? Yeah. Go for it. Well, but maybe I was in the wrong line. I'm sorry. No, 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 no worries. You live here now. Yes. Not originally from. Why did you move here? Originally for school. Did you go to University of Hawaii? I did, UH Manoa. What did so. you study? Botany. Botany? Yeah. Seems like a beautiful place to do it. That's why I came here. And so what is your line of work right now? Conservation. Conservation? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Of course. I wish I did something that useful. Uh, and so you chose, are you a vegetarian? I am. Interesting. I noticed that because you got an ume and a kombu onigiri, and the kombu is uh, an edible seaweed, and an ume is like a Asian plum Correct. kind of thing, right? I love onigiri. And especially the kombu. Mm -hmm. You got that kind of double seaweed action, which I like a lot. How's the ume? Is pretty good? Really good. Great creamy texture, just sour enough. Yeah, that is like a salty plum. It's unexpected. It's really tangy. You said you've been here before. So you come here to drink dollar beers and... I used to live in China for a while. And I remember night markets, food markets, very much like this. Really crammed, thin hallways, and it's just food everywhere. Yeah. For, for good prices and anything, anything you can think of, basically. For those of you who are constantly bugging me about the prices during these videos, this was $1.88. Hi, hi. Can I have a... Uh, just a regular order of takoyaki. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna wait for my takoyaki, but I wonder if they'll let me go back and beat that drum. Oh, and it's already, it's already. Hey, 90 pieces of takoyaki. It was very satisfying. I'm gonna go yakitori shopping. We've got chicken wings, chicken thigh, chicken gizzards, chicken hearts, something mysteriously called wiener, chicken breast, quail egg, chicken breast, interesting, beef skewer, beef tongue, chicken meatballs, stuffed peppers, tomato and bacon wrap, musubi, and grilled corn. That is squid. Let's do some squid. All right, that's gonna be enough. I'd like a Hiroshima style okonomiyaki. Thank you very much. We have a lot of food. These are the musubi, spam musubi. Very similar in character to an onigiri. It's just shaped differently. It resembles a piece of sushi, rice, thing on top wrapped in the strip of nori or seaweed. Now, this is Spam. Spam became very popular 
in Hawaii during World War II. Spam was a common staple for United States soldiers. And due to the large military presence in Hawaii, it caught on with the local populace. It's kind of good. This isn't exactly going to be a fine piece of level 13 Wagyu or however high that goes, who knows. I mean, it, but it's a little salty, it's a little sweet because it's got a little bit of a teriyaki glaze. It's comforting in the same way like a bologna sandwich would be comforting. All right, folks, we got a lot more ground to cover. Takoyaki, taco means octopus. A takoyaki is an octopus ball. Season two, episode one, me and Robert Sitsimo went to that weird izakaya and played takoyaki roulette and I got the one stuffed with wasabi. Cheers. To weirdness. Kampai to weirdness. My mouth is on fire and my sinuses are aflame. Takoyaki, common street food in Japan. I believe Osaka is the origin of the takoyaki. Battered outside, little piece of octopus on the inside, covered in takoyaki sauce, which is it's like teriyaki, but imagine it with like a little bit of that Worcestershire kick as well. It's got some little fish flakes, it's got some mayonnaise. Oh, they're kind of generous with the octopus. Usually the octopus is like a tiny little bit, but they gave me like a nice fat tentacle, tender octopus, and then it's like a sloppy wheat-based batter, even though it's brown and crisp on the outside. The inside's still pretty gooey. I really like these bonito flakes that are sprinkled on top. And then again, that vaguely sticky sweet soy Worcestershire glaze of the takoyaki sauce with like a creamy mayonnaise. We gotta move on, folks. I know I'm burning through this, but we have okonomiyaki. Now, my understanding of okonomiyaki is that there's a couple different ways to prepare it. There's a Hiroshima style, and there's a Tokugawa style. The style that people are most familiar with is the Tokugawa style, because it's done in like a batter. They'll ladle it out onto the flat top, and it'll sort of cook like, like literally like a cabbage pancake. This is different. The Hiroshima style, the ingredients are more layered. It's cabbage noodles, yaki soba, fried soba noodles. I ordered pork, so it'll be pork, and then as, as you can see when he made it, he put the egg down, put the ingredients on top of it, and flipped it over so that it's a little bit like the egg sort of almost serves like bread in a sandwich. Okonomiyaki. Okonomi, I believe, means what you want. And the yaki is grill. And I think that's a nod to the fact that this dish kind of seems like a hot mess, like it looks like it, and you can put all kinds of different things in okonomiyaki. This is very satisfying. It's nice to have sort of cabbage as the base, to have a slightly crunchy vegetable. The earthy, vaguely sulfuric, but in a pleasant way, quality of the egg sort of keeps it all together. This is the yakitori. Meat on sticks, things on sticks are popular in Japan and all over the world. The restaurant where we got the yakitori is themed after one of the Japanese professional baseball teams, the Hiroshima Carp, which is a great name. Other ones that I can think of just off the top of my head, the Yomuri Giants, Oh, and there's also one called the Ham Fighters and the Tokyo Yakult Swallows. Baseball is huge in Japan. And that place has like baseball memorabilia, has baseball players who've signed the wall. And the yakitori sauce, it is a sweet, salty sauce, which has become sort of a common theme to the, the different Japanese dishes. I don't know, guys, as we move on to the squid, I'm getting worried because I'm starting to run out of things to say about meat on sticks. No, it's satisfying, craveable food. It's got nice contrast between sweet and salty, most of these. They're either grilled or fried, which gives a pleasing crunchiness or a pleasing char or a pleasing greasiness to a lot of these items. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from the Shirokia Japan Village Walk in Honolulu, Hawaii. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. Mm. And the pickle so you know when your when, so you know when your sandwich is good. <laughs> this sandwich? This sandwich is the truth. <laughs>